right, let's do this, boys. Let's go. Let's go, Dion. Three. One, two, three. Dig. Come on. Dig, dig. Just continue to be great as a unit. All right, not individuals. All right, sound good? Anybody have anything? Let's be great, gentlemen. Let's be great. Come on. Offside three. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. Fans, due to the inclement weather, our game will be delayed until further notice. For your own safety, please leave your seats and head over to the concourse until further notice. Once conditions are suitable for your safety, we will let you know so you can return to your seats and the game can resume. Thank you for your cooperation. Well, Brian, the 2017 season is in the books, and we'll kind of look at this thing big picture, but I do want to talk about the game Thursday night that wrapped up the year. A bit unique, uh, pretty much kind of encompasses what this season has been like for this uh, this team, but you had that long weather delay. I'm, I'm curious how you approach that with your guys and, and some of the ways you guys manage what was um, something that nobody wants to deal with as you're ready to play a game. Yeah, it was a difficult situation, you know, but, but the guys I thought were very loose in the locker room, you know, playing games, having fun, you know, enjoying the, the free time I guess they had together. Um, and I thought they did a good job of, of maintaining that focus, you know, from starting a warm-up to, to having to go back in to, and, and waiting and then kind of going out there with a very short warm-up and playing. Uh, I thought they did a good job of, of you know, maintaining their focus and, and being ready to play, uh, but you know, keeping it uh, entertaining you know, during that downtime as well. Well, some of that entertainment had to be seeing your, your little guys, your kids, learning face-offs or working on face-offs with Ben Williams and C.J. Cosby on the locker room. Well, that was actually uh, Coach Goers' kids. Oh, okay. I, think, I think they have plenty of good coaching from Coach Goers. You know, there's not many uh, better, you know, I guess, face-off guys in, in the history of the sport than, than, than Coach Goers. So, um, but maybe, you know, they probably, like my kids, probably don't trust their dad and, you know, have to listen to somebody else. Right, hey, boys, real quick. Hey, last time together as a team, right? Last time together. How hard are you going to play for the guy next to you, right? I love this group. I love what we have in this locker room. This game is about you guys having fun with each other. Go play free, have a ton of fun, let's come back in here to win. Let's All right, let's go, go. Baby, let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Family on three, family on three. One, two, three, family. Come on. Bring what you need, all right? We're not coming back in. Family friendly atmosphere. Uh, the game itself, I, I think it, it shows where this team is. I mean, I'm sure you and everybody involved in this organization would love this season to keep going because it seems like this offense, specifically when you put up 23 goals, is playing as well as any team in the league right now. Uh, what do you think made last night even that much more uh, fruitful on the offensive end? You know, just uh, the, the numbers that we had from different players, you know, with, uh, with Lyle having nine points. Uh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Josh Byrne having his, you know, seven goals. Oh, Tucker, Tucker, on the back side here. Go for angle and move. Why am I the only guy? Oh Somebody guard this man. Somebody guard this man. Somebody guard this man. And Jake Vaccaro having seven points. Miles now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Next ground ball. Here we go, Moran. Here we go, Ben. Um, you know, I thought we were we have we have guys, three or four guys, you know, a game that can put up six, seven goals. Um, it's pretty pretty unique. Yeah. 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 You no, know, we have. Many guys can kind of put up those numbers in a different game. So, you know, having three guys in the same game put those up was, was pretty impressive. Uh, you know, not having any playoffs on the line or anything in a, in a, in a meaningless game uh, for those guys to, to come out there and, and to come back from a, from a five goal deficit in the, in the second half was, was pretty impressive and it says a lot about them. Each week we seem to talk about Josh Byrne and uh, there's probably no more ways to break down what he does as a player, but this season, you've been around this league for a long time, he now sets the record as the most goals by a rookie. He didn't even really have a full uh, set of games, not even close. Uh, what is it about him and, and what does it give you in terms of confidence going forward that you have somebody that may be a special player in this league as part of your team? Yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> talent-wise, you know, haven't seen many better uh, for, for a first-year guy. Uh, you know, before the game, he told the coaches, he goes, coaches, you know, he goes, I'm going to bring out some new stuff that you haven't seen before. And after the game, I think we we're like, well, wh where was that all season? You know, <laughs> why are we holding that back? But, uh, you know, the one-handed goals and different ways he scored was, was extremely impressive. Uh, and uh, how hard he plays, you know, how hard 
you know, guys like him and Lyle you know, ride and, and get ground balls, I think uh, says a lot about their, their talent and also their character and you know, how much they care about winning. Jesus Christ, good hustle. Awesome. Drop it, PJ! Good job, four. Good job. Good job, Lyle. Good job, Lyle. Good job, Lyle. The hidden ball trick is always something that fans love. It, it, it jumps off the screen when you see it. And I found the one against Denver with Lyle and Miles. It, it wasn't as obvious at first, but then it completely caught them off guard. What was your perspective on it from the sideline? You know, I, I knew Lyle had the ball, and I think a lot of the Denver guys did too. Could hear him saying four has it. Um, but you only need to fool one guy, and that's the goalie from the other team, and, and, and that seemed to work. So I thought that was a huge play in the game where I, I think it was the first time we took the lead all, all game um, and really energized the guys, and I think uh, we didn't look back after that. But, uh, you know, I, I think even Miles was, uh, he didn't think it was like that great of a fake, and he couldn't believe the guys thought that he had the ball still. So but it was a lot of fun. You know, Miles, uh, Lyle's a talented guy, and he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve, and it's always fun to watch. And I've heard that maybe Miles' orange arm pads could have helped because it kind of <laughs> created that uh, visual that it could have been the ball, and, and Lyle took advantage. Sure, you know, whatever it takes. I think, I think Lyle, uh, Miles was saying that, you know, he's putting his elbow in, in a stick to make a look at the ball, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun, always a good, uh, you know, entertaining thing for the fans. So that was a joke. We had me and him had run a, a hidden ball trick. You know, we didn't talk about it. He was walking my way. We were manned up. He flipped it up. I pretended to catch it, and I and I faked the uh, pass. And we were all wondering how did how did they actually fall for it? But I was making a joke to my elbow pads are orange. I put my elbow pad in the in my stick, so they thought I had a ball. But uh, no, that that was a, a very very cool play. I'd never been a part of a hidden ball trick like that. Um, you know, nice. I I think that it was just kind of this. Lyle threw it up. I, I, you know, faked it well enough for the defense to freeze for a second, and he just threw one in from about 25 yards, and it was, uh, it was definitely pretty funny. Anything you can do, we can do better.